This is exactly right. Welcome to the mini-sode. Oh, this is my favorite murder. Um, we read stories you tell us on paper and typing. Yep, we just read them right back at you. We just read them. We act like we're doing something. Yep. It's just it's just reading. It's fun for us. You hear a fucking True & Co. ad. It's over. You know. It's go- easy. You know what's funny? Like, we always talk about we feel lucky and this is a dream come true. Yeah. But literally my favorite thing in school, the only thing I ever really liked to do in school uh-huh. was read aloud in class. Oh. And now I get paid to do that. Jobs, because you never get picked. You never get called on. No, or they do paragraph. Each person takes a paragraph, and you never get a shine, Karen. I mean, I I would have to wait, you know, forty nine to fifty nine other kids and sitting there going, "Are you really going to read it like that?" Yeah, that's not how you pronounce that. Goose that well adjective or whatever. Who am I? Who am am I I to talk about not pronouncing (laughs) shit? Right. (laughs) I can't believe you didn't pronounce Worcester that way. I went up in the attic, and it was fun. Okay, go. You oh, go? wait. On a, f- a Forensic Files, I saw recently, one of the talking head experts <gasps> pronounced it addict. I love them. Up in the attic. They're my best friend. I was like, this can't... I should record it for okay. you. Okay. I wish you would. Okay. <laughs> the subject line of this is another Virginia hometown weirdo. Great. Uh, hi, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, Elvis, Mimi, Dottie, Frank, George, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. Yeah. First of all, I want to say thank you for helping me get through my last semester of college. No problem. (laughs) I had a super long commute and a lot of really tedious projects, and listening to you guys really helped me get through my long days and nights. On graduation day, I listened to the podcast on my way to campus, if that's a good measure of how obsessed I am with this show. That's awesome. Thank you. My hometown weirdo has some backstory. I'm from Sterling, Virginia, a few miles from where the butt slasher apparently operated. And after hearing that particular mini-sode on my drive home one day and dying laughing over it, I immediately went and told my mom about it. But she had an even better story. Uh, They always do. She said that a few years ago in my town, there were a few incidents where a woman would wake up in the middle of the night and find a strange man just laying in bed next to her. What the fuck? After the woman understandably screamed and flipped her shit, the man would just jump up out of the bed and run oh. this only happened two or three times but he was dubbed the snuggler oh guys <laughs> my mom's theory was that he was just a drunk guy that had walked into someone's house thinking it was his own and laying down in bed only to be woken up with someone screaming in his ear maybe one time maybe but <laughs> but i kind of doubt that it was that innocent yeah mm-hmm. we do too i think he did end up getting caught but i couldn't find very much information about him although while i was looking him up i found articles about another more recent case of a um, man in sterling who snuck into women's houses to touch them in the middle of the night. Mm-mm. Definitely creepy, and he didn't get a hilarious nickname, <laughs> but he was caught only a few months ago, April 2019. Despite this, and even though I laughed about it for a long time, I couldn't go to sleep for hours that night, laying awake in fear of the snuggler. Yeah. Well, that's it. Stay sexy <laughs> and don't get snuggled, Sarah. Man, sleeping is such a vulnerable fucking thing. That's why you put the chair under the doorknob. Okay. Then you take a piece of fishing wire and you string it across the doorway, invisible to it. And then you put cowbells on either side. (laughs) And then you start a jam band. And then you invite fish into your room every night. Okay. This is called Coworker Lives in Haunted Ypsilanti Ripper Murder House. Hello, beautiful Stephen and my powerful women. Wow. (laughs) All caps. I am (laughs) freaking out. I've been waiting years to write in a story and my new coworker, let's call her Allie, just shared something so wild I immediately had to tell you guys. The other day at work, she nonchalantly said, the sorority house I'm living in is kind of haunted. I'm more of a Georgia when it comes to my belief in ghosts, but I immediately demanded her to tell me. Me too. (laughs) Um, She asked if I had heard of the Michigan murders and quickly realized that she was referring to the Ypsilanti Ripper, Mm. uh, John Norman Collins. She proceeded to tell me that her sorority house is the Ypsilanti Ripper's uncle's house. Oh, you shit. Ha- read The Michigan Murders, everyone. It's such a fucking good book. The Michigan Murders by Edward Keys. It's old, but it's fucking like a great true crime book. And oh, it's good. just such a fucked up story. Do you have it? Yeah, Vince gave it to me when we were first dating. And I was like, oh, hey, will you marry me? Oh, you no, know, right? Yeah. He, yeah. He doesn't like murder. Okay. I won't borrow that one then since it's a, oh. it binds your love together. Yeah, I wish I'll you get my. I can get my own. I'll get you one. <laughs> 
I'll get it for you. For my next birthday. That's right. This may seem unimportant at first. Like, okay, cool, a relative. But this house is where his last murder took place. Oh, my God. John Norman Collins murdered Karen Beinman in his... Ahem, police corporal uncle's basement while he was house sitting. Oh, how no. fucked up is that? He cleaned up the evidence poorly. For example, he painted over a blood stain in the basement and left a bottle of ammonia just to prove he's the worst. Mm. Your fucking uncle is a police corporal. Are you kidding me with this shit? <laughs> this evidence is what led uh, to his eventual arrest. Anyways, on to the hauntings. Allie told me that once in the middle of the night, she woke up and saw a weird figure in her room. She described it as the Grim Reaper, but all white, hovering at the end of her bed. When I asked what she did when she saw that, expecting her to be freaking out internally as I was hearing her story, she said, I turned on the fairy lights and went back to bed. <laughs> That's actually kind of a good solution. Yeah. Because it looks so twinkly and pretty. Yeah, you're in a Wes Anderson movie now. Nothing can go wrong. Hey, what, how about a, how about you rom-com your way out of this ghost situation? <laughs> it's pretty, what if you fall in love with a ghost? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That was amazing. Uh, da, 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 back to bed. I appreciate her candor. One of her roommates also claimed to see the figure that same night. She said that when guys have slept over at the house, they have nightmares of a girl being murdered. Mm. Other typical ghost things have happened too, like the oven turning on, pots and pans falling off the shelves, lights randomly turning on, and light switches not working. And then it says, and this is such a fucking me thing, paranormal or faulty wiring. <laughs> That's right. She told me how they have done many sage cleanses and even had a pastor come in to bless the house and expel, quote, bad energy. After thinking about it, I understand why she wasn't afraid of this ghostly figure. If it really was the spirit of Karen Beinman, who was a freshman EMU student at the time, I wouldn't be afraid of her either. She was just a sweet baby angel who had her life cut short too soon by a total asshole. Mm -hmm. And then all caps, sorry, this was so long. I love you all dearly. Thank you for the joy you give me during times I felt alone. XOXO, Stevie. Aw, Stevie. Stevie, Stevie. I can I just say, and I know both Stevie and Georgia are big ghost cynics. Mm -hmm. Steven, how do you feel about ghosts? Oh, I definitely believe in ghosts. Yeah, I, I would have guessed that. Sweet. So two against you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but well, and the ghost, the ghost that's my friend doesn't believe in me, so it's two what? against oh. two. God damn it! All right, well, I've got this alligator I'm about to throw at you, and he believes in ghosts. That's from last week's episode. <laughs> oh shit! Damn it! <laughs> Cut that out. No, don't cut it out. <laughs> We're recording two in a row so we can have a fucking vacation. Dang it. It's yeah. fine. This um, is what it's really like. This is a real deal. Uh, <laughs> but I was going to say, you know, my ghost experience yes. and my big old ghost story that I love to tell. Um, and some connected things are dreaming about it, dream about it before you mm -hmm. have the experience, having the experience, and hearing dishes in the mm -hmm. kitchen. Those were all things that happened in our house, too. Uh, so maybe... The dishes are haunted. Maybe. <laughs> we definitely didn't do dishes, so we knew right. that it couldn't be us. Maybe you're Beauty and the Beast. Maybe. Maybe thank, you live. Maybe thank no, you and fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I met you and Steven. Subject line of this is, I went to prom with a murderer. Great. Nice. Hello, my best friends who don't know they're my best friends. <laughs> And also Steven and sweets, fuzzy angel BBs. <laughs> I'm going to jump right in. Years ago, my dad had a good friend, Ronald, and Ronald had a gorgeous son named Chad, who was a year older than me. I was in love with him starting in sixth grade, and I fa finally managed to snag him freshman year. Yes. Oh, she put in three work, three years of work on good Chad. Good you, honey. Chad was my first real boyfriend, lost my V gar card to him <laughs> in his neighbor's barn, no less, Ooh. where we live sounds is super rural. <laughs> itchy. That sounds itchy. <laughs> yeah, it's a little... You're going to get a rash. And ticks. Um, not in the barn. No? No, no. Okay, I don't know. I was so in love with him as much as my 14-year-old heart could love. Mm. Well, that's a lot. It's kind of more than a 30-something-year-old heart can love, I yes. think. Yes, I you? think you love less and less over the years. I agree. This is the great fight that we as human beings have to fight. That's Please right. love like a 14-year-old. That's right. Passionately, constantly on the verge of tears. Yeah. A little bit hysterical. That's right. Um, you go a little fucking crazy. Go all in. Okay. We're all fools. But not love. for the guy you're dating right now. He's a dick. No, no. God, that guy's the yeah, worst. Don't worry about him. None of your friends it's like not him. not him. Or her. <laughs> okay. Chad was really popular and athletic, played basketball and baseball, and was adored by all teachers. 
As I was a weird, chubby, hippie goth girl, <laughs> I, mm. I felt like I'd won the boyfriend lottery. I loved spending weekends with his family, watching cartoons with his little brother, going fishing, eating his mom's grilled cheese sandwiches, and stealing weed from his dad's stash. Yeah. <laughs> that is a goth hippie girl's dream life. Mm -hmm. They were a completely sweet, normal, all-American family. Mm -mm. Mm. The only problem I ever went to was with Chad. He, I bought a very beautiful ivory gown. That doesn't sound very goth. Stripper heels to match, had my hair, nails, and makeup done the works he comes to pick me up in khakis and a black and gray sweater vest <laughs> over a white t-shirt not it what the actual fuck i was so upset but he said his parents couldn't afford to rent a tux Aww. yeah now we all feel bad yeah sorry which was uh which would have been nice to know beforehand good point yeah. but anyway yeah. we went danced made out had a great night Around a month or so later, Chad dumped me. I was devastated and bawled my eyes out, threatened self-harm, the whole nine yards. Mm, teenage. Right? I, you could not pay me to be a teenager again. No, it's absolutely the worst. It's the worst. It's an assault on all your senses, right. especially uh, your emotions, which are not a sense. Okay, so, <laughs> as I say it, I'm, I know I'm wrong. Um, he came over to give me my things from his house <sighs> back a few weeks later and... When he asked if we could still be friends, I punched him dead in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no. he doesn't sound like he deserved it, but also like, <laughs> that's a cute hippie goth. Cute, but then also, yeah, don't, tone, don't do it. Tone it down a little. Yeah. Go high. When they go low, you go high. She did. She punched him in the face. She <laughs> Instead of the nuts. That's right. <clears throat> okay. He left angry and bleeding. <laughs> I also cut his letterman's jacket into a million pieces wow. and mailed the shreds back to oh. him a little at a time. Oh, my God. I was so dramatic. She's fucking, She's teaching a course. She She's taking the hurt uh -huh. and she's making an art project That's of right. it. And then forcing him to look yeah. at it. Performance art. Yeah. Learn it, Chad. Performance art through the mail. That's right. Cut to tennis years and a million garbage guys later. Mm. My dad calls me one Sunday, Saturday morning while I'm driving to ask if I've seen the front page of the paper. I hadn't, and he said, go get one ASAP. Mm. I whip into the gas station and run to the newspaper stand. There's ja Chad's picture accompanied by an article detailing the murder of his best friend that he committed. Oh, my God. Seems he'd really gotten into drugs after high school and strung out on meth. Ugh. Mm -mm. Offed his bud over some drug money. The body wasn't found for over a month and had to be ID'd by a distinctive tattoo the guy had. I was in shock, but not really. Boy, do I know how to pick him. <laughs> anyway, thanks, you guys, for making me feel less alone and isolated in my weirdness. Y'all are the best. Stay sexy and don't go to prom with a guy wearing a sweater vest. Amber. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Amber, I think his life went down the tubes when he l lost you. That's right. Or his letterman jacket. Uh, Maybe that's all he cared about. That's where all his power was contained. That's right. Could be. <laughs> but don't blame yourself. You're not wrong. No. Catch some shit up. And also, you know what? Reapproach. Yeah. Now the next time you go to date somebody, say, what about this person is Chad-like? Right. And if it's more than five things, you can't go out with that the person. The third question you'd be asking your date is, do you own a tuxedo? Yes. And that's it. And that's how you know. And... If they, if the answer is no, say, can you afford to rent right. a tuxedo? Right. If you can't, one will be provided for you. <laughs> and are you willing to wear a tuxedo t-shirt? They're funny. That's and great. And they get the job done. Oh, I got my fucking nephew a, tu a tuxedo t-shirt to wear at my wedding. Micah? Yeah. Did he love it? Oh, it was the best. Yeah. Okay. With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. 
and that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go buy. Here we go for da 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 um, hello everyone. It's, this is called a hometown birthday present. Hello everyone. I am so excited to finally buck up and write this hometown to you. My older sister's birthday is June 13th, so I am writing this in honor of her birthday. Happy birthday, Courtney. Love ya. <laughs> That's it. No. Stop using our podcast to wish That's Courtney right. a b- happy birthday. Courtney's like, I don't even listen. <laughs> How do you know, Courtney? Yes, you do. Courtney, you love this podcast. <laughs> Stop favorite. it. Any why? Okay. We grew up hearing absolutely bonkers stories from our dad. As a foster child on a strawberry farm in the 50s, a Navy veteran, ex-firefighter, an e- uh, ex-EMT, and construction worker in Buffalo, New York. Hopefully not all at once. Um, <laughs> He's seen it all. Yeah, he has more than enough hometown stories to go around. Well, it certainly wasn't healthy for us to hear all of them, starting as literal toddlers. <laughs> at least we always learned to, quote, check our exits and to carry a pocket knife. And then in parentheses, you never know when you're going to have cheesecake. Uh, and then she said, dad jokes for life. Yes. That's such a dad joke. I will never forget the moment I learned to look both ways when I crossed the street. He showed me what happens when you don't, using a horrific image from his EMT training book. Oh, no. Dad. Dad. So, our dad was quite a partier back in his teenage years in the late 70s. Hasn't totally eased up yet. <laughs> This is a story where I really think his check your exits catchphrase came from long before he became a firefighter. He was at a house party with some friends when two dudes they didn't know showed up. The guys were harassing the girls. And so my dad and his buddies kicked the guys out. Little did they know the guys hid out in the staircase at the apartment house. The party winds down and everyone goes to sleep. At some point, my dad is in the bathroom when he smells and sees smoke coming under the front door. What? They are up at least on the third floor uh, of the house. He tries to kick out the tiny window in the bathroom, but to no avail. He then gets out of the bathroom and rouses the rest of his friends. They all get into the living room, which has a large window. Him and his buddies bust out the window and tell everyone they need to jump out. The fire was in the only staircase of the house. Oh, shit. There was no getting out. The girls go first, and I think one of them may have broken her leg in the jump. All the people at the party jumped out safely. Or so they thought. My dad thought everyone else had left the party, but one guy had actually fallen asleep in the stairwell. No. He did not wake up in time and died in the fire. So That's sad. Horrifying. Turns out the guys who had been kicked out were so mad about it that they set the fire in retaliation. And then it says, what the fuck? Find a new party, you fucking evil losers. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. It's hard to imagine how this trauma piled on the many other traumas my dad has experienced. Still working on that, hey, maybe you should talk with a therapist angle. <laughs> <laughs> That's good luck with good that. Good luck. Start by getting them a subscription to psychology today. Yeah. It's a good hint and they'll start to learn some shit. Mm-hmm. Stay sexy and always carry a pocket knife for those unexpected cheesecake moments. <laughs> Emma and happy birthday, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> Did she write it again? <laughs> <laughs> Emma, your sister's a brat. Emma, you nailed it. No, I mean, Courtney, your sister uh, Emma's a brat. Uh, here's what I love. That check your exits is so smart. It really is. It's like... It's spatial awareness. It's like know what you're going into. But that's the thing about, and I got that from, of course, Jim the Fireman too, is that thing of if you go in, you have to be able to get out a different way. Right. There has to be two ways to get in and out of a place. And because someone was just telling me this. Wait, please stop me if this was you and I talking to each other. Maybe. I'm so scared right now. Um, (laughs) But it was the thing of if something happens and you're in a space like say you're you go to see a show and like a band is playing and something happens and everyone will run toward the place they came in from oh no this is that not wasn't me and but I'm, I'm fucking learning some yeah okay, go and on. that's why i'm repeating it so sorry to go? whoever said this to me but basically in, i feel like it was Kara clank or someone like yeah. that but basically that everyone will remember where they came in from and go that way you find the other exit and go the way people aren't going so yeah. you don't get trampled or like caught in a group of people right yeah good to know yeah 
Who said that to me? I bet it was Kara Clank. Let's I'm going to give was. her full credit, but I've been listening to so many podcasts lately yeah. that it's I'm having that thing of like my friends, and it's like no, that's it's not your friends. <laughs> we do it too, you guys. Yeah, <laughs> we can't. They don't know it. you. Okay, this one's lighthearted. Okay, Georgia, Karen, Stephen, Jay, and furry friends. Okay, I also have a random story that I was reminded of when you read female Colby's Garden State Killer story a while back. This uh, while this happened to my sister, she is not a true crime lover, so I get to steal her story and tell it to you. Yay! That's right. When my sister was about 12 or 13, my mom and dad let her stay home alone for the first time. She was with one of her friends in our big, scary suburban house when they looked outside and saw a man trying to get into the window with a screwdriver. Mm -mm. Needless to say, they freaked out, grabbed the phone, ran to the laundry room, which is the room with without windows. Yeah. Very smart. <laughs> Instead of calling 911, she called my mom and dad on their early 90s car phone. Oh. <laughs> they called the cops and immediately started back home. During the attempted break-in, my sister saw a van that was mysteriously parked in our driveway and relayed this information to the cops. The police found this van and brought him back to the house to be identified. <gasps> After my sister and her friend ID'd How the guy... How scary that they're like, here he is again, yeah. everyone. Oh, my God. It, you'd think, but after my sister and her friend ID'd the guy as, would, as the would-be burglar, the cops started smiling, holding back laughter. This man was not the uh. Golden State... She said Garden State Killer before, but Golden State Killer here. Yeah. Um, she so means was, Golden State She meant Golden, Golden yeah. yeah. There could definitely be a New Jersey killer. Oh, there's absolutely a Garden State Killer. Mm. If there isn't, what? <laughs> kill him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that was okay. Um, there's got to be. Yeah. The man was not the Golden State Killer, nor was he trying to break into the house. Instead, he worked for the awning company my parents hired to install and remove the window <laughs> awnings every year. He was simply removing them, packing oh, them for storage, and moving driver. on about his day. Oh, that poor guy. I bet this happens in a lot, though. Yes. You should knock and be like, hey, I'm going to be doing this right now. Or how about your 90s parents with their awesome car yeah. phone let a 12-year-old know that yeah. maybe there's going to be a guy swinging by? Can you let a 12-year-old know? How, how about you let a 12 year old though i think it was a few more years before my sister was comfortable enough to stay home alone. oh my god like no you're so safe 27 <laughs> stay sexy and don't call the cops on maintenance men aaron <laughs> i'm a giddy i'm gonna blame this guy that he didn't knock and be like hey i'm gonna be fucking around by your window right now true but i i would feel like if you see a van in the driveway right they're not gonna park in the driveway or they are. Well, uh, who, the guy breaking in? Yeah. Well, but I mean, don't you think if you work for an awning company, there was like Joe's awning company on the side of that van yeah, but in some way? What a great cover. Awning. <laughs> no one, there's no such thing as an awning company. Oh, everybody relax. It's the awning man. He's <laughs> you know, what? He comes every year because we're rich and have a fucking cell phone in our car. Okay. These people. Get, getting your awnings removed? <laughs> what what the hell? hell? You just hose them off every couple of years, right? <laughs> <laughs> awnings. Who has awnings? Okay. Awnings. This one's called Drive Through Stories. Hello and welcome to my letter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's my number one. <laughs> Absolutely. That's my current number one. I worked at McDonald's for several years during high school and college. Most of the time spent taking orders and payment at the f the first at the Quote, the first window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sadly, most of these stories involve coffee obsessed seniors and creepy dudes grabbing at me, but here are two gems. One. Once while my manager was speaking to me about something at the drive through window, her whole demeanor changed as she noticed something going on in, in the line of cars. In the car behind the one at my window, some dirtbag was punching the crap out of his girlfriend in the passenger seat. <sighs> mm. While I stood there in shock, my badass manager leaned down to the driver at my window, calmly told him what just happened, and asked him to stay parked in the drive through until the police arrived. Yes! This particular drive through lane went be uh, between some the store and embankment, so he would have been trapped in. Yes. He agreed. She called the police who were right around the corner and the guy was arrested. Hell yes. Uh -huh. I never found out what happened to the woman in the car, but I think about her a lot and I hope we did her some good that day. Aww. That's great. Number two. Me, same drive through window. My middle school best friend's piece of shit ex stepdad once <laughs> drove through offering me, all caps, an ounce of weed a week if I would agree, all caps, not to testify about what? the time I found the Polaroid picture of his dick and balls. <laughs> It's spelled dick and balls. Dick and balls. Um, he'd hidden in her room for her to find. Uh, what? Okay. You're like, you're at the drive through. Let's count the problems. You're like, you know, it's a great day because fucking Big Macs are two for five. Like, yeah. That's and the best. And it smells like fries all the time. That's right. You're fucking. Uh, that's... You and offers you an ounce of weed a week. Like for life, I guess. But also, sorry, where? 
what comedy realm does that dad come from where it's like this is a great idea it's not comedy dude it's, it's true I'm a pervert and i'm disgusting and a lunatic photographer child molester <laughs> Photographer. photographer. <laughs> it's the photo. It's the photographer. Um, it's the artist in him. That's right. And then she says, probably the only time I've turned down weed in my life, y'all. <laughs> Girl. Unfortunately, I do know the unsatisfying conclusion to the story. Statute of limitations. Ugh. Fuck statute of limitations. Okay. Thank you both so much for bearing your souls every week and making me feel like a normal person. If you ever send out a request for substitute teacher stories, I'll be sure to write in about the time a teacher accidentally left a porno for me to show to her class. <laughs> what? Anne. Anne. You nailed it. Anne. Substitute teacher stories. Uh, Let's hear it. So good. I bet they're fucking weird. Yes. The weirder, the better. If you were ever a substitute teacher yeah. thrown into some incredible crime drama, we want to hear about it. Crime, creepy shit. Um, send them to myfavoritemurder at gmail or go to myfavoritemurder.com. You can submit them there and uh, check out our radical website. And thank you for trying. Thank you for writing these in. Thank you for creating such wonderful content for us to read to you. Yeah, we appreciate it. Stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, do you want a cookie? Ah.